I am the Director, Resource Architect for Sustainability at AI National. What LEAD has brought sort of back to architects and engineers is sort of a rediscovery of what used to be you know, a modern master builder. Before we had modern mechanical systems and energy systems, we had to make our buildings work uh, with the environment they were built in. We're kind of rediscovering how to do that, but making it better with new technologies and the materials that we have available to us. Project City Center in Vegas, $7 billion to $8 billion worth of construction, um, all about trying to meet the sustainability goals. A client that didn't have to build that way, but they made a conscious choice to build that way. What I find wonderful about that project, it allowed what it allowed me to do as a sustainability consultant was call up manufacturers like Dornbrock or Waterworks or Kohler and say, hey, we, we have an interior designer or an architect who really wants to use your product, your toilet, your sink, your, your faucet, um, and we love the design, but, you, but in order to use it in this project, you also need to meet these flow requirements for, for water usage. That was a game changer. And because of that, we now have a lot of higher end products that aren't just have one, one color or one thing that meets the green requirement. We now have the full array of what they offer meeting sustainable requirements, and it's becoming normal. The first urge that you have as soon as after a disaster is, I just want to put my, I want to get back to where I was. I want to be where I was. I want to be in my house. I want to have my neighborhood the way I'm used to seeing it. Well, when you have an opportunity that presents itself to, okay, if you could rebuild or you could put things back in different places, would you do it any different? That's not something that necessarily, after you're recovering from a disaster, you have the bandwidth to think about, but it is the opportunity that um, uh, we are seeing as one of the bigger, stronger issues related to sustainability. Like, if your school is something that is important to you, are you gonna put it in the center of your community and make it symbolically and physically the center of your community? That's really a powerful statement of what design and sustainable design can do. Is there a way to, if we're gonna put our stormwater system all back together, rather than having it all go down to the sewage treatment plant, can we use that to, for irrigation so that I can actually reduce my overall footprint of my community um, as a master designing concept? From what I understand in the way that Greensburg has put their buildings together, they have made a commitment to sustainability, not just on a building by building, but on a community scale. In Greensburg, you have the opportunity to to redefine what standard means in every building that's there and the way that energy is going to be used, what, what I am going to do in terms of natural ventilation, what I'm going to do for my overall utility grid and my, nation, my connection to renewables. Um, uh, those are things that they can do broad sweeps to that are limitations in buildings right now that, are, that help that kind of give buildings the bad name because that's more expensive. It's not more expensive in Greensburg. It's now the way it's going to get built. And that's if you want to be in our community, these are the things you need to do. That's one of the, what uh, is, is the strength of Greensburg, and I think it's gonna be a strength in any community that is trying to recover from a disaster.